Hi, my name is Dave Cook. I'm the Senior Director for Customer Success here at Figure 8 Federal and the Chief AI ML Scientist. I'm here today to talk to you about the fuel of AI and machine learning, training data. Nothing moves in machine learning without training data. And at Figure 8 Federal, we're focused on how do we really help federal organizations fuel and accelerate their AI initiatives across the enterprise. So who is Figure 8 Federal? Figure 8 Federal is a DC-based company. We've been here about three years with our offices in Roslyn, but we have strong roots within the Silicon Valley area where we've worked for over 14 years with a number of organizations, large and small, helping them really build out their machine learning training data capabilities. We're a company that has an active top secret facility clearance and we support a broad spectrum of AI and ML capabilities, particularly focused on data pipelines and how do you really create, curate, and build machine learning training data at scale. I often like to say that we're really what you would call left of the machine learning model. We support scalable DevOps by a deep experience with leading DOD, federal and commercial entities, and running everything from JADC2 to Health and Human Services. Quite frankly, we always say the messier the data, the better. We enable AI and ML at scale with expertise in data processing and pipeline automation and partnerships with industry leaders in machine learning model T&E, benchmarking and data and model refresh. And we provide at our core business, a human in the loop annotation service, what we call data annotation as a service for data science and machine learning programs. That includes both the annotation as a service on the platform, along with the machine learning or the data annotation labelers themselves. So you have to ask the question, what is the problem that Figure 8 Federal solves? Well, AI and machine learning faces a common problem. DJ Patil probably said it best when he said that the hardest part of data science is getting good, clean data. Cleaning data is often 80% of the work. And if you look at the graphic on the left side of your screen, and we go from all of those items that say data, so from data identification all the way around to data augmentation, those numbers really add up to 80%. And when you think of Figure 8 Federal, what you have to think of is you start at 80% with, with what we do and what we're able to offer in terms of data annotation and data labeling services. But there's a more important part because it's not just a data science question, it's a business question. And I want to highlight here another quote from Nan Molchandani, who's the, uh, the CTO of the Joint Artificial Intelligence Center, which says that we've trained the model on a particular training data set but that data set is not representative of global terrain or global information. So when you think of the diversity of the training data set from a testing and representative perspective is so important. And what we're really talking about there is model generalization. How do we apply AI, how do we apply machine learning at a very broad scale, not only across the DOD, but across the entire federal government. And that's where Figure 8 Federal is really focused now and into the future, is how are we going to help the federal government achieve its AI and machine learning objectives? So when we think about the problem that we solve, what we're really thinking about is how are we working with the federal government and how are we able to help the federal government achieve its AI objectives both now and within the next year or so, and in the next three to five years. And when you really think about the federal government's AI journey, you have to split that up into data efforts and into AI efforts. And I want to talk for a minute about what those data efforts and those AI efforts look like together because you have to think about how you're going to work with data in order to ultimately get to the point in AI. You can't just build AI systems. You have to think about what that data journey is going to be. So you really have to think about data efforts and AI efforts as each being along a similar kind of path of discovery, of prototyping, and ultimately scaling. So let's talk about what those discovery customers are looking at. They're really evaluating data structures, prioritizing data sets, evaluating data governance. Once we move from there into prototyping, and we're talking about different kinds of customers, customers that are prototyping are establishing data governance bodies and frameworks and developing ETL prototypes, utilizing both prioritized data sets and appropriate tools. And then we have customers that are getting to scaling where they're leveraging data governance to really prioritize those data sets. So we're seeing how customers are moving along that data prototyping all the way to data scaling journey. At the same time on the AI efforts, which really complement them, we see where there are, the customers are either in the discovery phase, identifying the quality data sets ready for AI use cases, 
in the prototyping phase, they're really bringing data sets and comparing it with AI capabilities, bringing them to maturity, to ultimately establishing plans on the, the scaling side for ongoing maintenance. What we see overall here along this AI and this data journey is customers either working not necessarily within silos, but they're working on kind of individual projects to they're working across the enterprise. And if we look across the federal government, there are groups that are doing every type of work in this area. So where is Figure 8 Federal in working with the government along its AI journey? Well, our work has primarily been focused within the Department of Defense and the intelligence community on real pathfinder initiatives on how do we go from discovery all the way to scaling. And in that time, We've had a number of learnings that are regarding different types of data sets. For example, how do you annotate certain kinds of data, or how do you uh, work with certain kinds of data, or pre-process certain kinds of data. But as you can see on the slide, we've worked with almost every data type that you can imagine, whether it's audio or video or imagery or text. During that time, we've also worked across security classifications, where we've labeled everything from unclassified data to highly classified data. But if we go to the, the uh, far left on the screen there, you can see, for example, um, where we've worked with different kinds of images or different kinds of audio, as well as video, as well as text. But in every circumstance, we've really figured out and worked with our federal partners to figure out how we can do this at scale. In our work over time, we've generated over 350 million annotations for the federal government in its Pathfinder initiatives within the DOD. One of the use cases that I really like to highlight and that I think is really compelling is our work with the Department of Defense's Joint Artificial Intelligence Center. And in particular, it's with the Humanitarian Assistance and Disaster Response line of effort. Now, what's so compelling about this use case? Well, there are a few things. The first is, is that this is something where we really worked in partnership with the DOD and worked in partnership with other industry partners. In this use case, we pursued and won the opportunity with our partner, Esri, who's one of the leading geospatial companies in the world. One of the things that you have to really think about with data annotation is, is there's nothing, nothing really flashy or exciting about it, but it is critical. It's important. And what we did in this particular use case is actually embed within the normal analyst workflow. So when you look at the capability that we have, and you can see a screenshot, on the screen there is through a couple of Python scripts we were able to connect to our industry standard API and not interrupt the workflow where you've got a user, a pet analyst for example, an image analyst for example, who's able to easily take and with a few clicks select an area and ship it off to figure eight in order to get their data annotated and ultimately get their results back in order that they can train their model. It's incredibly important that we not interrupt the workflow. And this is a really great example of two partners, really industry leading partners, working together to solve a problem for the DOD. That was one of the main successes of that effort. So what you also see on our screen is an example of our workflows tool. And the workflows tool is really about how do I chain together annotation tasks? This is one of the core things that we understand here at Figure 8 Federal is, it's not simply just being able to throw data at something. You really have to think through the data design step. What does it take to take a task and break it down into something that's very manageable, that can be annotated at scale, and that can ultimately produce compelling results? And with our workflows tool, you're able to actually take annotation tasks where you're trying to get training data annotated and break it apart into something that's really important, but also that will allow you to work at scale. This is something that we brought from our commercial learnings, and we've introduced it within the DOD with really significant success. In addition to our work with the Joint Artificial Intelligence Center, I also want to highlight some of our other really unique offerings and capabilities within the DOD, things that we've learned working with the DOD and things that we've really brought to bear in our work on Pathfinder initiatives. One of them in particular is machine learning assisted annotation using machine learning in order, or using machine learning on top of machine learning in order to be able to really scale up an AI initiative. One of the examples that you see here is our use of OCR, essentially being able to, optical character recognition, essentially being able to scan a document in order to highlight certain portions or to be able to direct a human annotator 
to be able to be more performant or to perform more effectively. On the other side, you're able to see our LiDAR capability where we are able to annotate this in 3D. We also have an ability to, through machine learning assisted annotation, work on both full motion video as well as on imagery either to pre-process and prioritize among different image types or to be able to, for example, label one object and then interpolate or use machine learning assisted annotation to help maintain persistence across the images. One of the really compelling statistics that we have, one of the benefits that we've shown from our work with the DOD is where we saw a 51x improvement in the overall labeler output just through using machine learning assisted annotation. At a high level, that's how we turn data into AI and ML fuel. So as we look back what we've talked about, what I really want to leave you with are a couple of key points, things that we've talked about from the beginning. As I said early on, nothing moves in machine learning without training data. There's nothing very glamorous about it. In many ways, it's probably the least glamorous thing about machine learning, about AI. There's always the focus on the model, you know, the one model to rule them all. But the truth is, is that data is at the heart of it. And that's one of the things that we're really proud of at Figure 8 Federal as an organization is getting to be at the heart of what are the real pathfinder initiatives, whether it's within the Department of Defense, whether it's in the intelligence community, whether it's across all of our federal partners in health, in finance, in agriculture, and in the sciences. We're really excited about what the future of AI and ML is going to be in the federal government and excited about the fact that we get to be a part of that conversation. And we really look forward to being the experts in our field and in helping the federal government understand what they can do, how they can do it, what's really achievable in the short term, what's achievable in the long term. I have to say that we recognize the strategic importance of getting data right. It's the thing that you can't afford to get wrong. And we're just so proud of the work that we've done so far, and we look forward to not only having that conversation with the government, working with our government partners, we look forward to what the future of AI in government can really be.